want to draw a few thoughts out of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. It's been interesting as I've been studying. I want to tell you, I don't study the Bible for an agenda where I want to emphasize what I believe and expect everyone else to follow. That's not how I read the scriptures. I, I don't do that. I read it because, because I'm hungry to know the heart of God. I'm hungry to know how God operates and works and and I'm hungry to understand what more I can experience from him in my life. And because when I experience him in my life, it blows over in everything that I do. And so I, I want to know because there's so much more for me yet to experience. I'm not 90 years old or 95 years old, but, but I would love to be at the place when I would, if I get to that age... I want my counters to be fresh and new, and I want my life to expand. I want my faith to be even bigger. I want my influence in, in areas to really supersede my own abilities. I want to I wanna know aspects of God that, that just get me caught up sometimes because I'm just, this thing is just shaping and molding me. And, and I, I, just, I just want to know more. For myself, because I know when it comes alive, it just, it just floods everywhere. It just does it. It's like when you fill your mind with negativity, everything you just see negativity, and it's like that's old news. Well, that's new news and every time news. It's we we gotta we gotta be we gotta be the church in those areas. We gotta be the church. And in Second Corinthians chapter. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, there, there's, there's some really, do you ever notice when you study that there's golden nuggets? It's like you, you, you read, and it really doesn't make sense, okay? I'll be honest with you. Some of it is just like blah, 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 okay? Some of it is. And, and almost you get distracted because it just seems blah, blah. I don't know about you, but I'll be honest with you. Some of the Bible I feel is blah, blah. But then there's moments, and this is what makes it so fascinating, and then there's moments that you're like, oh, no, 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 whoa, whoa. Where did that come from? Maybe it was a moment that something just came alive to me, or, or, but it's like, mm. when I was going to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, it was those mo- it was it was like, you know, the Corinthian church had lots of problems, okay? Paul wrote, this was a letter. He wrote to the Corinthian church, and there was a lot of issues. There was stuff going on there that I don't even want to talk about publicly because we'd have to really explain things. But there was all kinds of stuff going on in that church, and, 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 and Paul addresses that sometimes as, as a leader. And, you know, you, we, we got to work on these things. These, this shouldn't happen, you guys. Like, we're, we're kingdom people here. Like, and so he, he, he does it in a way. And, and so you get a lot of that stuff. And then all of a sudden, it's like, mm, there's something gold in there. Second Corinthians 12 gives us something golden. And, and I just, I want to take a few moments and pull, pull some things out of there because I know when we understand it, it, it just, it can help us in our own life because that's one of the things I like about the Bible is it, it doesn't give you ideals. People work through struggles. People have issues and there's things going on and as a result, there's tension and, and often there's conflict, but yet in the midst of it, God, God shows up and works and, and what looks chaotic and messy turns out to be something spectacular and it's hard to explain, but that's the God factor in our life. We sometimes have a hard time explaining how things happen and, and how they come together. That's, that's the God factor because he values us. And so 2 Corinthians 12, there, there's three verses. It's 8, 9, 10. 8, 9, 10. Three verses. Paul addresses a subject. He, he, comes, he becomes personal here. He, he, he becomes real. I love when people are real, don't you? I love when people are honest with their struggles and, hey, this is not my point. Of, I, I am walking through this and I kind of wipe out. I love that because there's a realness to it. And I think that's what attracts people, that we don't have it all put together and that our life is just, mm, it isn't. It's, it isn't that way. People that often perceive it that way often have the most to hide, I find. And so I think openness is the best thing. Paul 
becomes very vulnerable and open in this passage of Scripture. He starts in verse 8 of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and I have it up there for you. It says, three times, three times I begged the Lord to take it away. Now, Paul had an issue. Um, a lot of people have ideas of what that issue was, and, and there's a lot of talk about what it was, but the reality is we don't know. We don't know. All as we do know it was a huge obstacle and issue to him that he addressed it, not once, not twice, but three times. And it says he begged the Lord. Have you ever been in a situation like that where you're begging someone for help? When you're begging for perspective? When you're just like, at the end of your road, you're begging. Well, Paul felt like he was at the end of his road. He says, three times I begged the Lord to take it away. Verse nine, each time, each time, he which was God said, my grace is all you need. My power works best. Look at what the word is. Works best in weakness. And, and then he goes on and says, so now there's a major switch. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that, I don't have my glasses on and so, so that the power of Christ can work through me. And then he says this, that's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. I titled my message, what did I title it here? I scribbled it on the notes here. Oh boy, I can't even read that. <laughs> Worship must have been really good this morning because I can't make sense of that. Yeah, whatever, it's okay. I wanna talk about weakness. I'll be honest with you, when we talk about weakness, now what is weakness? Weakness is, is, is things in our life that we're prone to fall into. Something that, that seems to have power over us that we can't overcome. It, it seems like a weakness is, it shows our limitations. It shows the fact that we still have work to do in our life. And for so many people, weakness is probably a greatest threat to them because if you grew up in a culture like I did, I grew up in a really dominant church culture, and, 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 and weakness was something you wanted to keep buried because if somebody would find out what it is, it would be in the next bulletin the following Sunday. And lots of people would have opinions of how that is supposed to be worked out. And you would be the subject of a lot of coffee conversations. And so because of that reality that we've experienced, oftentimes we look at our weaknesses as, as an insecurity where we feel like we have to hide. And we hide that because we don't want people to know that we're still work in progress. We, we want to hide it because we're afraid that people might look different about us if they know we have certain weaknesses in certain areas. And I want to say this, right? God knows us so well and he's not threatened by our weaknesses our potencies to go in certain directions when we're pressured or, or decisions we make or attitudes we um, create because of circumstances that keep surfacing in our life and, and, and we're weak, we can't overcome those areas. And so it's interesting when I looked at this passage of scripture where Paul addresses that very thing because in verse eight it tells us that there's something so pressing in Paul's life that he put himself in a vulnerable position where he was begging God for relief. He was begging God for a change of situation. He was begging God for a shift in what was happening in his life. And it's, we gather from studying that passage that it was, it was something of significance that he felt that he couldn't go on any further in whatever was around him. That was a, a blockage point. And so he says, three times I pleaded with the Lord. 
I want to bring you three things really briefly because we've been a little bit longer this morning, and so just bear with me. Three things I want to pull out of there that can help us when we're confronted with weaknesses because all of us are weak in areas. All of us are works in progress, and, and so we, we can learn. We can learn. Paul is a good teacher. We can learn a lot from him, and so three things. First of all, when I read this passage of scripture, this is what came to my mind. Don't limit. How do we overcome our weakness? How do we be real and, and, and face our giants? Don't limit yourself. First thing, don't limit yourself to your own abilities. It's our abilities that get us where we're at in trouble. Because we can't overcome. So, so we try harder. I, I, I read... I had an email sent to me about a predominant Christian leader that, that really made some bad choices and messed up his life, and he had to step away from ministry because of the choices he made, and all he could say for it was, when this is over, I'm going to even have higher standards. I'm like, you couldn't keep the ones you had. How are you going to live up to higher ones? Because often when we are confronted with weakness, we tend to say, well, we'll put more things in place, more stuff so that it won't get us. And the more we concentrate on our weakness, the more power and authority it has over us. That's why I believe Jesus spoke the way he did to Paul. And, and, and in essence, he says the same thing to us. We got to remember, if we want to be overcomers in the areas that seem to grip us the most or have the greatest influence because it seems our potency to go that direction when we're under pressure, we've got to understand we can't limit ourselves to our own abilities. It's interesting, it says here that, he said, my grace is sufficient. You see, what grace is, grace is God's enabling power. When ours fails. God's enabling power. So it's not about trying harder. It's not about having higher standards that we're really going to protect ourselves. It's not about pretending they don't exist. But rather it's allowing God. And I've said this many times and I'll say it again. It's allowing God to come into the very context of our situation. And allow him to bring his ability where my inability is. So it's not about us finding the answer, it's us involving God in the perspective because when he comes into our situation, he brings all of the resources of heaven with him because that's who he is. We have the potential not only to learn some fascinating opportunities to plow through what we're plowing through and overcoming, but when we bring God in the picture, it allows him to bring his perspective. And sometimes we're waiting for it now, and we need it now when, 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 when it's not about now. It's about a change of heart, not a change of decision. We, we can make decisions all the time, but, but if it doesn't happen here, right? And he, I'm, not, not, I'm talking heart. It's only going to go so far till the next problem. You see, that's why it's not so much the decision, although we make decisions, yes. But I'm saying when we involve God in the process, it's not about, well, three times I've asked you, come on, I've got to do it. It's not about that because there's a greater principle that God wants to invest in us, and it's the principle of his enabling power at work every day, in every sentence, in every context of our life. And we have a lifetime to learn that. We're not, it's, it's like me learning Greek. It's like, it doesn't happen the first lesson. I'm in lesson nine. I'm still finding myself reviewing seven and eight. I have a little piece of paper that I carry with me. It's on my phone, and I go through this list. A loss means another otherwise. Allah means but. Ek means out or out from. And then I go through grammar. I go through grammar. I go, I go through this all the time. Christos is Christ. Jesus is Jesus. Eldelphos is brother. 
Angelos as messenger. Sir, I go through these all the time without the answers because I, I know i got to keep working at it because it's a process. But when we allow grace to be a part of that process, he gives us power when we seem to not be able to do it. He gives us power. He gives us reference. He gives us context. He gives us perspective. And all of a sudden, when I look beyond myself and look to him, and that's what Jesus was trying to convey to Paul here. God knows our weaknesses. He knows the things that hinder us. He knows the stuff that when it all flies up the poop, this little thing works here. He knows all what goes on in there. He knows it. And he's not threatened by it. Rather, he says, I just want to come and I want to teach you a principle or principles that when those fly wheels turning and the poop's flying, I want to give you something that you're going to be able to turn the off switch. Now that you have that imagery in your mind, let me go to point two. Don't limit yourself to your own abilities. It's bigger than us. So we involve the biggest in the perspective. That's a journey. It's a process of learning and growing, making mistakes, failing, restarting, readjusting. It's just all part of it. It's all part of it. Second thing. Whew. I'm having fun up here. I just want you to know that. Number two. Let your weakness, let your weakness, let that thing that grabs you and holds you and pins you down. Could be thoughts, could be decisions you make, could be things you do, whatever, whatever it is. Let your weakness become the opportunity. Listen to what Paul says. He says, first of all, three times I begged, but God said, my grace, my, my grace is perfect for that situation right there. Perfect. In fact, it was so convincing that in the same verse, Paul says this, so now I am glad to boast. I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses. All the masks are off. No pretending. Just real life life. He says, I boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. We've got to look at our weaknesses as an opportunity to see God's power at work. We can put pressure on you. I can, as a pastor, I can put pressure on you. You need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. You've got to do this. This is important. This is all this kind of stuff. I can put all that kind of pressure on you. But it's never about pressure. It's about releasing to your potential. That's what God's power does. It releases his potential through you. God never says this, 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 or I'm going to wait. God's always active because he knows us. I woke up with this thought. I don't know why I woke up with this thought. I woke up with this thought. God does not think like we do. See, we think he does. That's why we argue with someone that has a different opinion in us because, after all, God thinks like me. Now, look at this picture, okay? Just, can, you, can I indulge you just for a moment? You have a handle on how God thinks? You. Do you know how big God is? And you have a handle on how he thinks? He's eternal, I'm not. He's omnipresent, I'm not. He's all knowledge, I'm not. 
He has everything in the palm of his hand. In fact, the Bible tells us that he spoke the very existence of earth with his mouth. And I have a handle. This is how God thinks. I think the closer we walk with God, the more understanding we begin to re- he begins to reveal his heart so that his heart can come through. Even when I have a wrong doctrine, a wrong perspective, his heart comes through, and that's what's powerful. That's what's powerful. Mm. Don't let your, weak- let your weaknesses become your opportunity. So often we fear it. Let's accept it. Not this is my norm. Oh, that's a word we're using now too. Whoa. Norm, my. It's not normal to wear masks. It's not normal to be isolated. It's not normal to be six feet apart from people. It's not normal to be scared to go to school. It's not normal to go to work and wonder what other people think. It's not normal. That's for free. Let your, let your weakness become your opportunity. It's things we can't control. Let's make an opportunity. He said, God's power, God's power works through me when I'm weak. Paul then celebrates it. I'm telling you, I will boast. I will take pleasure. The Greek word there is eudakeo, which the idea of, can I put an image in your mind? You're at a casino, and you put 25 cents in, and you go, jing, jing, and it goes, bing, 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 and it says you won a million dollars. It's like, oh, the numbers are still rolling. Hey, 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 hey. That moment of overwhelmness that you're proud of, that you're excited, you're exu... You, the kettle, that's... He's not saying casino, okay? Please, don't write me in. I'm using it as an analogy, as a picture. If that's offensive, then I'll say you went to church and someone gr- congratulated you from, I don't know, but you're excited. You're taking pleasure in that. He says, therefore, I will take, I will boast about my weaknesses. For what purpose? That he compare himself with others? No, he does it because he know he invites God's power in that very spot. Third and finally, it is this. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid. You want to ask the right people because, you know, but don't be afraid to ask. Paul pleaded with God three times. Just because we don't get the answer right away doesn't mean God's not listening. Because My Bible tells me that God is always at work. I don't always see it. So when I ask for help, it's on its way. It's just going to look different, and it might arrive different, and it might be at a different time frame and a different context than I'm hoping for. Don't be afraid to ask people around you. I've had to ask for help in things in my own life. Because I just couldn't see through. I couldn't overcome. You see, when you involve people in your life, rather than hiding yourself from people, is you become real and you give them permission to be real. And when we're real, that's an invitation for God to come into that situation. Because when we're fake, there's nothing for him to invest in. We're not being real. Amen? Paul says three times, I begged the Lord to take it away. But each time he said, my grace is sufficient for you. My power works best in your weakness. So, now, I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can rise through me. That is why, and then he says, I take pleasure in my weaknesses and all the stuff that I got to plow through, that's my version, Because when I'm weak, I am strong. 